right. it, uh, it seemed only appropriate that in the city of Antwerp, a presentation that at least has a little bit of beer in it would, would work well. And uh, this project that we have worked on with uh, Fred over the past few months uh, hopefully will be uh, entertaining. But we would like to give the historic aspect before the, uh, uh, the more current one. So I turn it over to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a bit late. Um, I was taken in by the previous lecture. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, we were, Hamilton proposed maybe to do something with, with um, some Plantain poster types. So. There are some, I mean, in the uh, collection houses, uh, a number of uh, wooden punches. So this is not wood type, they are wooden punches meant for sound casting. Um, here you see a, a very big texture. Huh? The, the pencils give you a little bit of an idea how big those letters are. They are hand cut in pear, pear wood. Uh, and um, yeah, they are um, the only ones actually we, we got in our uh, Western history of printing. Um, and also very important, they seem to be used on posters. <coughs> this is a poster from the 17th century. And it appears as if the, the, it's been printed with the typeface cut by Hendrik van der Keere in wood that I've just been uh, showing to you. Uh, it's interesting because this, these artifacts are the earliest surviving typographic poster composition. So it's really movable type we're looking at here. <clears throat> and it is, in this case, it's uh, a bit larger than A3. They were called uh, house, Huisbriefletteren, so they were po posters meant to paste on the front doors of uh, people. And this is a real estate poster. That's all what it is. Um, it says, Deze pand is te huren op de rentmeesters kamer, which means this house is for rent. And if you're interested, you have to see, uh, go to the kind of city councillor. <coughs> Here's another sample. <coughs> Again, it uses this big textura, and it's an infill poster because it says Deze 8, so there's a Roman numeral. Huize design, it's, it's about the sale of eight houses at once, <coughs> so apparently there were a lot of rich people in, in Antwerp. And the Palmslag, so the deal, would be made on the 1st September. And that's also written, so that's also information which is filled in. Like I said, these are the uh, earliest <coughs> typographic posters. We have in the collection seven uh, of them, and they're all real estate posters about the selling and renting of houses. With one exception, where a very important exception, worthy two colors, and says, good Leuven's beer. So it's a good, good beer from the town of Louvain. Um, yeah, it's a, a kind of beer advertisement. Yeah? So yet these, these posters are a bit of a, a, a mystery, because if you look indeed at the punches we have, the wooden punches, and you have a sheet of film taken from that, uh, as you see here, and you put that sheet over the printed results, you'll see that the model is the same, but not the typeface. It's printed with uh, a similar uh, typeface, but not the one that Van den Kere made. And actually, if you take a close look at, uh, for instance, the, these three H's, uh, Number one, okay. Number two, compare the bottom serif of the first stroke. These two ages are, uh, letter H, are different, very different. So they are um, different pieces of type. And then the third one is again uh, different. 
uh, that this is a composition in type is clearly because the word cope, you know, they inverted the O and it starts to jump. <coughs> so what this, this actually says, this poster is printed with uh, a font of very big poster type and probably three different ones. So it's, it's, it's a mix up of, uh, of at least why would you have three different ages? I don't know. But they are there. <laughs> so um, the fact that this is also another typeface done van de Keren proves that this was a practice uh, done actually probably a, 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 a lot. And it's done here in uh, Antwerp. We for sure know it's also been done in Paris. And there's nothing left, only these posters. <coughs> so we decided to uh, honor that and um, make a recut mm -hmm. and print of this, because this is one of the easiest pieces of history where we can draw with big certainty some important lessons. First, mm -hmm. it's important to have your own house, second, and a good pint of beer. <laughs> That's is what it says, <laughs> doesn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, I need a, a quick tech assist there. Mm-hmm. Uh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That will work. Thank you. So a uh, quick overview of the uh, Hamilton wood type uh, manufacturing company in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, which began in 1880 and grew, I guess you would say, at an alarming rate if you were a competitor of Hamilton's. And um, so they, they are in such a very small town, but they had this geographical advantage in that they were in the central part of the United States at a time when the population uh, was exploding uh, quite a bit. So... Um, Hamilton began as a, a veneer-based type maker, something somewhat unusual, but as he uh, absorbed the other type makers, he very quickly switched to another uh, type of uh, cutting that, that most people are aware of, a routered method. So this is Hamilton standing in front of the pantographs, um, probably about 1910. And the fortunate thing for us is that we are continuing to cut type, and we are using those same pantographs. Um, obviously they changed, um, but they grew over time to a point where they were uh, a massive industry in the city of Two Rivers. So oddly enough, um, as, as you know, offset technology was rendering uh, letterpress and therefore wood type generally obsolete uh, in the 50s uh, at least, and certainly in the 60s. Hamilton continued cutting type all the way up until 1993 or at least what was uh, formerly called Hamilton. The great advantage that we have, therefore, is that these individuals were cutting type so late that when the museum began, we were able to bring those people in who had retired um, and have them teach us the process. So this photograph is probably from the 1950s. You can see the pantograph tables have operators working on both sides. And um, here you get to see a little bit closer example of how the stylus itself uh, works. But what is actually going on is the way the proportions of a given piece of type are set. So using the compass on the left, what you're measuring is the width. Typically, the letter O is most common because it is proportionate top, bottom, and side to side. Not on this one of Eric Speakerman's, but the... the uh, um, the point is still true that you begin there and then you measure on the piece of type you cut to make sure that your uh, width is proportionate. The pantograph being a, a tool that allows you to uh, reduce down to one third of the original size of a pattern. Um, and much like uh, uh, working in photography, reductions are, are always a better example. This is a photograph of a woman named Mardell Dubeck who is the last truly trained type cutter that Hamilton had. And when you consider the fact that Hamilton puts everyone else out of business, she becomes the best type cutter in the country by default. 
Um, again, a good example with the uh, stylus on the right and then the router spinning at the top. Originally, these routers would have been powered from a belt when this was uh, steam driven, but they are currently pneumatic. Here she is cutting the eye. The width of the type is generally kept random because as you know, between the W and the I, there is variation. If there's enough room on the block, you just turn it around and cut another one. So in the uh, background there is a woman named uh, George Brilsky and her father was one of the best at teaching us uh, pantograph. Um, when Mardell was not around, we needed someone who was willing to train anyone on this, uh, on this machine, and she stepped forward to learn from her father and uh, become a second-generation type cutter. So this is Norb uh, Brilsky in the museum basically giving lessons. And uh, when I began at the museum, if he would walk in the door, you had to stop everything. It was time to cut type and nothing else. So he is in the process of uh, giving some training to his daughter. Uh, at that point, Mardell uh, began to take over and give more instruction, and in the background is uh, an apprentice trimmer. Um, so Georgie here is working on what um, 72 line, uh, 72 pica type, typically the tallest that a pantograph of this nature is able to handle. And it's always more difficult learning from your father, I can, I can say from experience. The nuances in the cutting of type are not so much in the tracing and uh, in the cutting, but understanding the adjustment of the proportions um, and then really the setting of the blade because depending on the type that you're cutting, you can have either um, uh, a uh, slightly beveled blade or something that is a little bit more vertical. Uh, again, uh, a type trimmer that I uh, needed to bring out of retirement for the final finishing. The, the moon here gives you the best example of what is needed to clean out those areas too tiny for the blade of a pantograph. So the, at a trimmer's table like this, the, the process is done by hand. The advantage, of course, of the type cutter is that they have the template to follow. The trimmers are all working freehand, and of course, if, if you slip up, well, the printers will let you know. Uh, certain pieces, uh, as you can imagine, demand a lot more attention, and I have to say that this particular project that we worked on with Fred um, forced us uh, into some difficult areas. This was a wonderful project we were lucky enough to work on with Matthew Carter. This is a Latin style of his and a chromatic, as you can see, the positive and uh, negative pieces. This was done with Eric Speakerman, a font that he has allowed us to name after one of the Hamilton type cutters, as we have done with uh, a number of our types, creating something of a legacy program. Uh, this being the Brilsky font designed by Nick Sherman. And this is the process of uh, creating the templates. So um, cutting them out to mount to a surface and then uh, moving on to the, the cutting itself. This is uh, an Italian modernist design done by Louise Feely, so another example of uh, a newer type that the museum has cut. And she, too, has allowed us to name this font after the typecutter Mardell Dubeck. So here brings us to the, the, the more difficult cutting. We had uh, really uh, never done anything quite this complex before. And so it was going to be a real test of, of uh, Georgie's ability to cut the type. And I have a short movie, and I'll, I'll get a quick assist there to get this started. Perfect. Um, we're looking at the, uh, the current Hamilton Museum, and uh, you can see here the, the pattern and the pieces that she's already been practicing on. So in this case, we went to one-third size of, uh, I would say, a 30 pica pattern. Okay. 
we decided it was best not to have audio with this. The, the pantograph is nothing but a high-pitched whine, so one can only imagine uh, if you were working at one of those two-person tables, you, well, you became deaf. That's what happened. Uh, initially, the process is, uh, first of all, uh, going counter to the blade direction, um, counter to that, but always following a rotation, and uh, a type that is more complex like this, that has finer details, will need two cuttings. So this is actually the broader blade, and in essence, you clean out the negative areas. If it's at all possible, you can move into the counters, but uh, again, those are, are so delicate that uh, this particular type mostly needed two cuttings. So the stylus is decreased in size, and uh, as I say, the, the placement of the, the uh, stylus is absolutely critical simply because when you're working at one-third its size, it's, it's quite easy to, to chip the edge of the type. The detailing on the bottom of that G is particularly troublesome, and really she is merely uh, poking holes in it, and, and the reason for that is because then it's much easier to get your blade in because as a trimmer, uh, it gives you something of a start. And uh, like all type, it needs to be cut away from its block to be moved onto the trimmer's table. The tools that they modified for this process are absolutely wonderful to work with. You cannot go out and get another one uh, because they, w they took simple machines and, and uh, created them specifically for this. And the lockup, those purists of you will, will forgive us for not using coins to, to lock it up. This was a, a quick proof, as certainly Hamilton had such confidence in themselves um, that, that they never needed to print their type, but we, we wanted to be sure. So, um, thank you very much. That, that, that is our, uh, our project.